Welcome back to the lab. It's time for round two. You might be wondering why we need a second video on the Magic DAC device, but it's really quite simple. This thing can do a lot, and to be honest, we didn't fully cover its capabilities in our overview. That and Sean from Magic DAC provided an awesome demo script that shows off some capabilities of the DAC itself, as well as their expansion board. This M&A board is pretty cool. I wanted to give it some time in the spotlight. Thanks again to Magic Deck both for providing this product so we could evaluate it and offering the EE for Everyone community a discount. So make sure to use coupon code EE for Everyone when checking out on magicdeck.com. Okay, let's start from the top. I love the provided script because it keeps me honest in making sure we touch all the features. It starts off pretty simple, describing how to install the API and giving some errors and if the API doesn't respond correctly. Assuming that you get past that, the feature demo starts automatically. This starts with an analog demo setting an analog output to 3 volts DC, then showing a 300 hertz sine wave at 2 volt amplitude, and a 200 hertz PWM wave with a 3.3 volt amplitude. The accuracy here is well, about what you'd expect. The demo moves on to the hardware PWM and counter pin, and I'm not completely certain, but my understanding is that this pin connects directly to the micro, which is why this pin has a 3.3 volt rating rather than the 5 volt rating on the other digital pins. Continuing with that theme of digital, it does a quick demo of the digital inputs being set and read. Now we're getting to the real meat of our demonstration. After connecting the M&A board to the Magic DAC and powering on, the demo continues by toggling relays. Relays aren't the best for every application, but provide a quick and dirty way of controlling a circuit reference to a different voltage source or power supply. What's more, it has a programmable voltage source, which is a nice touch. This is rated for providing up to 2 amps at a voltage ranging between 1 and 10 volts, which I think will be quite useful. Uh, there's some mention in the datasheet about some tuning necessary, so your mileage may vary. Should be 10 volts. 9.8. I guess that's what they meant by, uh, it's not super precise. All right, looks like we're getting noise that is about 50 millivolts peak to peak with a switching frequency of about somewhere between a megahertz. Uh, let's see, that's about one, two, three microseconds. It's about 300 kilohertz, something like that. There we go, 160 microamps. It got 160.97. <laughs> That's darn close to what we measured with the DMM. Wow, That's that specs are really good. We set it to 3.77 amps on the power supply, we got 3.78. On the ohm meter, let's see what we get. We got 3.9. Hmm, that's a little further out. There we go, 1.377 amps going through. Had a 1.36. Not too bad. Okay. Well, all right, that, that was the end of the script. Looks like it worked pretty well. Um, before we get too far, I feel like I just need to say, sorry, Sean. <laughs> we had a great conversation about all the wonderful things this product can do. We also talked about this product's limitations and what it wasn't designed to do. This isn't what the Magic Deck was designed to do, I don't think it was ever designed with the thought of generating a constant duty cycle variable frequency sweep of duty cycle on the PWM output. Maybe I'm wrong. And I'll start with an example that might seem simple on the surface. We're gonna ramp from this 10 hertz signal up to 4,000 hertz with a, a step of, of 10 hertz. So let's just go ahead and run this script. And Let's see what we see on the scope. So far it looks good. Everything's working, everything seems to be going where it should. 
where you have 14 volts applied to the board. Wow. Ooh, didn't quite get there. This is a much more gradual acceleration, though I can hear the rotor kicking. There we go. 32 volts. 32 volts is what was required to get us there. Gives this thing to spin at 4,000 pulses per second. 30 volts was not quite enough. 32 got us there, though. That is pretty cool. I don't know if facing the camera sideways is more... That is cool. That is really cool. Well, that could have gone worse. I mean, nothing was broken, the motor spun, and I'm guessing that with a little more time, we could make this send a more predictable number of pulses that could even lead to something even resembling open loop position knowledge. Absolute position control, yeah, that's not happening the way that we've written the script. By attempting to generate this PWM ramp, we are really pushing the limits of what this can do on the I.O. side. We're really stressing that bottleneck between the processing power on your Windows computer and this microcontroller. Tens or hundreds of attempted operations per second is what we were doing here. Overall, not bad, but perhaps a microcontroller would have been better suited for this task. So. Make sure you don't miss our next video where we'll try to rebuild this system, but using a microcontroller running the stepper motor logic on top of an RTOS. Should be awesome. If you like this video and can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button, and leaving a comment down below. Let us know in the comments what you'd like to make this magic deck do. As always, I want to give a special thanks to our channel members on Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate the extra step of supporting us directly. Thank you. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye!